<clears throat> Would you be turning your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 24? While you're turning, I'd like to say I fail to say, but I do thank each one of you that uh, offer up a prayer for me while I was uh, uh, in the hospital and while I was having these tests. And, uh, Thank you from the bottom of my heart for Amen. remembering me and I praise the Lord that I have brothers and sisters that uh, can talk to the Lord and uh, and get a, a prayer answer. All right, in the book of Proverbs in chapter 24, there's, there's a, a word here, <clears throat> mischief. And I was, I seen it the other day and I got to studying about it and we... We like, a lot of times, we like to use this word mischief as uh, a <coughs> children and all, they're just in mischief and they're just like children, mischief. But listen, this word mischief uh, sometimes is used wrong mm -hmm. because uh, in uh, Proverbs 6, the Bible says there that there are seven things that God hates and one of them is mischief. And uh, here we see this word mischief meaning more than just uh, children being children. Uh, and here we want you to see this as I try to read these scriptures and uh, kind of hinge on this word mischief. But he says, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them, for their hearts study destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. So <clears throat> this morning we need to uh, think about this word mischief. But uh, enough of that. But notice here he says, "Be not envious against evil men." And today <clears throat> it's a it's a world that has a desire for worldly things. Right. And a man that is out here in the world, and he uh, has quite a great wealth or a great amount of worldly items, people envy him. Mm -hmm. But listen, these things that the world has to offer uh, can cause problems. And a lot of times they do bring problems upon the one that, that has them. And uh, so be, be, be aware of the things that goes through your mind and and I know you know you see somebody walk uh, driving a, a new car a new truck or have this or that oh boy I wish I had that he sure got it man listen <clears throat> be be satisfied with what you got amen if you've got a clunker that makes uh, uh, 20 miles an hour and gets four miles of the gallon be thankful mm -hmm. because listen you could be walking right and then again be thankful for the shoes you got on your feet because you could be walking barefoot so I mean, these things that that we have, we need to we need to thank the Lord for them, and be proud of them, and just go on about our business because uh, I don't want to be envious of anybody with what they've got because if they use it right, good for them. But if they use it wrong, shame on them. And they've got they've got a thing to answer for that. So he says, "Be not thou envious against evil men." And of course, this is this pertains, you know. Uh, envious towards evil men because evil men, evil people have great worldly things mm -hmm. because they don't care they don't care what they do uh, they uh, lie, they steal or whatever to get these things and they put them up mm -hmm. and they don't use them and they don't get no good out of them and most of the time when they die their relatives gets it and they blow it mm -hmm. and so uh, that's that's the way it is with with worldly things. They pass on to another one that will worship it also. So uh, the one that gets it, all he uh, all he wants to do is love it. He wants to put it in the bank, or he wants to put it up and keep it shined up, and he wants to go out and say, "My my, that's the prettiest thing I've ever seen." And that's that's envy. And mm -hmm. so be aware that we we don't get caught up in this thing. Now he says. Neither, neither desire to be with them. And so many times, you know, that's the next thing is we try to buddy-buddy 
with somebody like that and say, well, hey, if I can get to be on the good side of him, hey, maybe I'll get some of that. Right. Well, leave it alone. Amen. It's, it's, it's not what God would have you to do. If you want to get on the good side of anything, go to the Lord and say, Lord, I love you. I want, I want to serve you. I want to do what you have me to do. I want to be in your will. Amen. And that, that way, you're, you're, you're good with the one that knows best for you. Because the envious, the sinful, don't care anything about you. They don't even care nothing about their soul. So, uh, you know, if they don't care nothing about their soul, they don't care nothing about you. So he said, <clears throat> notice here, he says, For their heart studies destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Now, I, 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 I told you about this in Proverbs 6, but I want to I just get over there and read just a little bit to you concerning this. In Proverbs 6 and 16, I believe it is. <clears throat> we might get a little bit more from it than what I said, but in Proverbs 6, 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Yeah, even seven are an abomination unto him. So this this mischief that we're talking about is an abomination but a proud look a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood a heart that de de devices wicked em 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 can't say it imitation feet that be swift in running to mischief a false witness that speaketh lies and he that sows discord among the brethren. So this is one of the words here that we are, we're studying about this morning. These are some of the some of the, the uh, side uh, side words that goes along with it: a proud look and a lying tongue. Mm -hmm. Now, th they they are some of the things that that uh, that the Lord just can't stand. He hates it. And so remember this when you when you he says here my son in verse twenty my son keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother bind them continue them on thy heart and tie them about thy neck and when thou goest it shall lead thee and when thou sleepest it shall keep thee and when thou awakest it shall talk with thee for the commandments is a lamp and the law is light. And reproof is instructions are the ways of life. So, in other words, these are some of the things that he told and he said, he, Solomon, as he was writing this, he said, My son, you keep these, you remember these, you tie Amen. them on your neck, you hang on to them. And listen, we need to, we need to tie them around our neck. In fact, the business, uh, if you if you go along with me on this, you need to tie them sometimes so tight that uh, they'll they'll cause you to breathe hard. Mm -hmm. Because listen, we need to remember these things. Amen. Because we're we're out here in a world that is full of of wickedness and abomination of all kinds, and we need that we need that reminder from day to day to stay away from that junk and not to think upon that thing. Because if you're not careful, this flesh this flesh loves to get. Uh, in the worldly sense, and, and it needs to uh, think upon these things, and it will think upon these things. Amen. And it will think upon these things. Listen, I know what I'm talking about. It's I find myself thinking of stupidest things and craziest things, and and I have to say, Lord, forgive me and take this thought away because Amen. listen, it's 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 a it's it's something that God just don't care for us doing because. We're his children, and we don't need to be doing those things. We don't need to be taking these things in our in our heart. So, notice again back in our lesson in, in uh, Proverbs twenty four, uh, he says there, through, through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. So these things that we're talking about, using these words, using these thoughts. And, 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 and conducting ourselves in these manners. Listen, he says here, through wisdom, if we, if we try to understand, if we try to study God's Word, we'll have the wisdom not to use these things. And he says that the, uh, a house is built, and, and, and we, need to, we, need to, we need to build this house because this, this body, it, because it's the temple of the soul. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need to keep this body under condemn, or, a condition, or keep it in a condition that it's not sinful. And so he says, through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. And so that is our whole life. 
in a nutshell because building the house and wisdom of understanding as we go through the days and as we go through life, we need to stay in that condition. And he says here, <clears throat> notice, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and precious, pre precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yet a man of knowledge increases strength. Amen. For by wisdom, by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy way, and in multitudes of counsel there is a safety. So we see the thing that, that Solomon is, is, is uh, trying to uh, warn against here. He says here, a wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. And so if you study your word, if you understand what God is pleased with, then you get that wisdom and you can build your house, you can build your body, you can build uh, the place that houses this spirit and it will be pleasing to God. And, and he notices what he says here. He says uh, in, in verse 7, Wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gates. He that deviseth to do evil, he that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. And it well. goes along with the mischief. The thoughts of foolishness is sin. Now there it is. The thoughts of foolishness is sin, and that's what we we do, we do, and we do. And we have, to, we have to come right back and say, Lord, forgive me for having those foolish thoughts because they're there and they're, they're, if you fight them on this side, they're ready to jump in on this side. And listen, people, it's just an it's a, a everyday battle right. continually to keep your mind halfway pure and clean or that you can at least say, Lord, forgive me because, listen, it gets to the point where that you have these thoughts and you have these thoughts and you have these thoughts and you just might not give up and say, well, what's the use? I, 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 I can't help it. I can't. But listen, we can help it. Mm -hmm. We can, we can, we can't keep it out. But the thing of it is we can try to block it and we can ask the Lord to help us with this thing. So here, here it is uh, in, in, in verse 9. The thoughts of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, Behold, notice here, <clears throat> Behold, we know it not, does not he that ponders the heart consider it, and he that keepeth thy soul does not he know it, and shall not he render to every man according to his works. Mm -hmm. So, my son, I will read this, my son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul, when thou hast found it, then there be a reward and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Amen. So I'm going to read. I want, I want you to. I want to show you something in in the in the chapter three of Proverbs, but in verse one, if you will turn there. I'm in mean thirty one, three thirty one. <clears throat> if you'll turn there with me, three thirty one. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the forward is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. Now notice this. For the forward is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but the blessing, but the blessed, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Amen. Surely he scorneth the scorner, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. And so we have all of these things that we've read here. 
we have them to look forward to. And listen, he says, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. And the fool has said, there is no God. And listen, this morning, people, the world is full of them. I, I talked to a man just yesterday, and he said, if there be a God. Uh, so the thing of it is, if there's an if there, there's a doubt there. Right. And he didn't use the he didn't use the best language I've ever heard either. But the thing of it is, uh, there's so many people that are putting ever ever he, he I know what he put his trust in, and that's what he had made in Iraq and and uh, as he was in the military, and he 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 accumulated quite a bunch of but. Uh, that's his God. Mm -hmm. But uh, he talked about all of his times over and he said, if there be a God, you know. So listen, uh, it's, it's, it's bad to, it's, well, it's, it's worse than bad. It's, it's, it's terrible to, to even go there and say, if there be a God. So this morning, I would, I would to, if you would, if you would with me just a minute or two, turn to the book of Psalms in verse 37. Psalm 37. <clears throat> Psalms 37 verse 1 the Bible says fret not thyself because of evildoers neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity for they shall soon be cut down like the grass mm -hmm. and withereth as the grass, as the green herbs. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shall be fed. So he is comparing one that that don't trust in the Lord like a stalk of grass or even the flower that blooms. That's his, that's his, that's his fruit, that flower. And it says it'll soon be cut down. Right. And people, uh, that's 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 with all of us. We're going to soon die and leave this world. But the thing of it is, he says here that they will soon be cut down, and it it just shows how much how much worse their situation is because uh, he he uh, he says it and it. And it withereth as a green herb, and we we have other uh, 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 parables and all about uh, uh, cutting limbs off of trees. And men cut the limbs off of trees, and they lay there and wither and are gone. Listen, that's what he's talking about here, because he says, "For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as green herbs." He says, "Here, trust in the Lord, and do good." So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. And he's he's given us a promise here. Mm -hmm. you know? He's given us a promise. If we'll if we'll try our our best to to serve the Lord and try to do what we think is right. Listen, things may not be as pleasant as we think they ought to be sometimes. But listen, we always got to remember this: that the Lord says, there, and I believe in the Hebrews, "I'll never leave you." I'll never forsake you. Amen. Now they may get rough and they may get sh shaky, but the thing of it is, hey, he's got your good hand. Amen. And and the thing of it is, he sees the end results, and 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 that's 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 the main thing for us is 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 knowing what the end results is going to be, because I I want and I know that the end results of, of of my spirit is to be at home with the Lord. Amen. And that's what that's what I want to tell anybody about is is that so he says here trust in the Lord in verse three and do good so shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart now that ain't that ain't jumping up and squalling and and, and shouting saying hey if I get saved I've got everything I desire no. But the thing, the desires of thy heart is God's will. Mm -hmm. That what happens in your life will be pleasing to Him. And that's what we need to do. We uh, The desires of our hearts this morning is that I can please God. 
Mm-hmm. I want. I want to please him. I want to do his will. I want to be there and 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 and, and be in in, in communi- communication with the Lord. And so he says, this is the thing. He, he says there, uh, and then in verse five he says, "Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Trust in the Lord, and He'll bring these things to pass." And listen, you know, you may have a you may have a, a desire in your heart. You may have a loved one that uh, that you would like to see saved. Amen. Well, you can't do nothing about it, but this. You can trust in the Lord. Amen. You can serve the Lord. You can trust in the Lord. And what does he say here? He says, and he shall bring it to pass. And so you've got this, you've got this promise, people. It's just just like it was here. Uh, here trust in the Lord and do good, and so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. He's 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 given us these promises if we will if we will serve him. <clears throat> now, rest in verse 7. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. And so again, we get disgusted, we are disheartened, we get down and out sometimes when we see these worthy people and they have an everything that they need and everything that they want, everything that man's heart would desire, these worthy things. And we have rough sometimes. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, sometimes rough things is the best thing for you. Sometimes that's that's what you need to bring you closer to the Lord. Because, listen, it's not this world that we're trying to uh, gain, but it's a home with Him in, in glory. And Amen. these worldly things, they won't, they won't help the situation a bit. Now, cease in verse 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. <clears throat> Again, he says, Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And and you know, uh, these things come across our minds sometimes. Well, I'll just you know I'll just do this and uh, nobody will know it, or I'll I'll say this and nobody else will understand it or won't know it, and I'll get that. Well, you you do that. And you're going to be punished. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because the Lord knows these things, and it, you know, it, it, it's, it's something that the devil has tricked us into doing, and we shouldn't have it in our heart to do anything like that. And <clears throat> he says here in verse uh, nine, for evil doers shall be cut off. Now, if you do these things, like he said, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And if you if you do these things, listen, uh, you're an evil doer. Uh, in, in a sense, but notice what he says about the evil doers: shall they shall be cut off? Amen. And uh, I believe I believe saved people get out of the will of the Lord, mm-hmm. and I believe that they're cut off. I believe that the Lord has all He can stand or something like that, or at all, and He's not going to permit it any longer because they're a stumbling block to someone else, and so He cuts them short. Mm-hmm. It's not that they're going to die and go to hell, but the thing of it is. They're not living like they should, and they're 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 hindering people, and so you can you can take it for what it is. But the thing of it is, and that's the way I look at it. Now, he says here, <clears throat> for for evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now, I wanted to read again in First Peter just a just a minute here something that. I had marked here, 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1, I think it is. Bear with me a minute, we'll get over there to it. 1 Peter 1, 24. I had this marked in my Bible. <coughs> well, I don't guess it did. That's second. That's second. 1 Peter 1, verse 24. Now, here it is. For all grass, or all flesh, is as grass. And all the glory of man as the flower of grass. So that's here's with the glory of man that is as grass, or the grass is as a man that is not serving the Lord. So we see he has he has a glory, he has a flower, he blooms. But notice, 
The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Amen. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And so these things that we have said this morning is God's word. I've read it from, from uh, as best as I can. And uh, uh, that's what I, I want to, I, I, I got another scripture or two I'd like to read to you if uh, you'll bear with me in Psalms 73. In Psalms 73. He says <clears throat> in 73 verse 1, and I believe I looked this up, and this is where that David was running from Saul, and Saul, and David was discouraged, but God was watching after him. But he says, truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, <clears throat> my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the pro their prosperity right. of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, or no problems, but their strength is firm. So this is why, this is David's writing. He says he was envious of them. And listen, Saul had run him and tried to run him in the ground, tried to kill him. And all of Israel nearly had turned against him. And he had, I think, about 600 men with him. But he says, they are, they are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. So he's looking at the the possessions that the worthy people have, and he's envious of them. Right. He says, <clears throat> their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, his people return his and water of a full cup are wrung out of them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. For if I say, I will speak thus, Behold, I should offend against the generation of my children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went to the sanctuary of God. Then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought unto desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terror? Mm -hmm. These are the ends of the worldly men. And, right. And this this ought to encourage us this morning when we when we get to feeling sorry for ourselves and we get out here and see somebody that's that's just doing any and everything that he wants to do. But well, listen, their end is in a slippery place, mm -hmm. and soon they're cut off. So this morning, I, I would I, I want to encourage you all I can to. Uh, just be patient with the Lord. Uh, he don't need no patience, but just just wait upon the Lord. And these things that are hindering you, they will pass. Mm -hmm. They'll pass. And listen, if you'll hold steadfast, you'll come out on the other side like the children of Israel when they walk through the Red Sea. But just don't don't let these these worldly things interfere with you serving the Lord, because a lot of times you know we have we have uh, people that it's on par for the Lord, and uh, they get they get envious or they get discouraged, and the first thing they want to do is I'll not go back to church. Mm -hmm. Worst thing.
worst thing. Just keep on coming to church. Keep on trying to pray. Keep on trying to serve the Lord. Because one of these days, a little battle will be over. Amen. Because he says uh, uh, he'll, he'll come back and cut those down that, like the grass and they'll wither away. And uh, in one place there he says, we'll one day look and say, well, where, where are they? Where did they go? But uh, that's us this morning. We have, we, have, we have these ups and downs, but the thing of it is we have the Lord Jesus Christ that we can always go to and He'll, uh, he'll strengthen us. Amen. Thank you all this morning for listening to me. Amen. Thank you.